yourself for participating in debate, discussion, and voting on this matter. Does any member have anything to disclose at this time? All right. D, approval of minutes of the uh, Zoning Land Use Commission for the regular meeting of June 20th, 2024. So moved, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers. Second. A second by Mr. Sudier. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Motion passes. Communications. No communications, sir. Okay. We are going to F, public hearing, a rezoning from R1 single family residential to R3 multi family residentials, lot 21 and 22, um, square four, uh, Barrowtown subdivision, 2606 and 2608, Larry Street, Kirby, Bongolan is the applicant. Anyone here to? Uh... Yes, sir. If you just want to come up, state your name and address. Cassius Nixon, 2606 Larry Street. Okay. You want to tell us a little bit about what you're doing? Yeah, we, I want to place a mobile home on the lot where I grew up at. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. If you just do want to step to the side for just one second. All right. Uh, open to the public on this matter. Going once public. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Just come up, state your name and address, please. Okay. I my name is Ada Parker. Yes, ma'am. I reside at 2621 Larry Street. Um, I have a question for Mr. Nixon. Yes, ma'am. Um, you could ask it to the board and then. Okay. I, Mr. Nixon, we want to know, would you clean that lot up before placing a mobile home there? Because it's not fit for what you want to put there at this time. Okay. And that's your, is that your only question, ma'am? Uh, I have another question because sure. I see Mr. Kirby Bonvalant owns um, this pr property also. Um, 2606, 2608, and 2612 is full of debris that don't belong there. And um, Larry Street is the only street I see that's not properly fit for where we live at. Other streets are clean with home, uh, their homes and all, but at 2612, if someone passed there, they'll see all of that. That's not called for. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? I'm gonna give him a chance to respond okay. after you're done. Any no, other questions? You no got? other questions. Okay, thank you so much. All right, sir, if you wanna come back up and you wanna answer some of the questions that she had for you. Oh, okay, well, uh, in, in words of Kirby on, owning the property, I had to get Kirby to buy it because the parish tore down our family house. So I got Kirby to buy it because at the time I wasn't able to bid on it to get it. So I got Kirby to buy it, and I'm in the process of paying Kirby back. Okay. And, and, and she asked you about the debris and so forth. And ma'am, you can sit down if, if you the, want. It's up to you. The debris will will be moved in the, within the next month. I'm moving out the debris a little bit at a, at a time. When I work, I got to pay people to help me to move it. Yes, yes. So it's taking me a little while, but I done clean up a lot, but I still got some some more to move. It gonna all be gone. Okay. All right. All right, ma'am. I have a question. Okay, so if you sir, okay. if you just want to step to the side, thank you. We have no problem of him because we've been neighbors all our lives, but the problem is will the twenty six oh six and twenty six oh eight be totally cleaned up? Properly put for a trailer to get there. Is it a double wide or a single? It's a single. Would the property be properly clean, like a property is supposed to be clean, to put a double wide there? I put a put a trailer there. Everything gonna be gone, but my two sheds. Okay. okay. All right, and we'll get into some. Ma'am, you you want to speak? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So if you could come up to the mic, ma'am, and just state your name and address. My name is Kelly Lagarde, and I want to know... Uh, address? I, I'm sorry. My, oh, my address is 2605 Larry Street. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And, and what's my your question? question is, once the mobile home go there, is our property tax going up? Are we losing the value of our home by bringing a mobile home in? Okay. We'll get into all of those questions. Okay. I'll let administration clarify that. Um, sir, you can come back up. 
I tell you what, before you, before you do, let me finish off the, uh, the public hearing. Anyone else from the public would like to speak on this matter? Anyone else? Go on once. Go on twice. Three times public on this matter. Motion to close. Second. I have a motion to close by Mr. Thibodeau, a second by Mr. Rogers. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Motion passes. That's just to close the public hearing. Now we're going to have a conversation about it. Okay, uh, administration. Uh, well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to respond to some of what was said um, with respect to the, the property and and items and cleaning up the property. I did speak with Councilman Brian Pledger, who uh, had a schedule conflict and couldn't be here tonight. Okay. Um, but he is aware of that situation, and uh, we're talking about that. And I'm glad to hear that the applicant is going to be cleaning the, the property up. That was one of Brian's biggest concerns. Um, and, you know, if, if uh, there is any debris out there, that is something that nuisance abatement would need to address. It's not something that the Planning Commission here has any jurisdiction over. And I would recommend that if if you, you know, want to address that, that you just address that by telling or directing us to go ahead and contact nuisance abatement and they can handle it accordingly. And then she also had the tax question, if you want to answer her tax question. So I'm, I'm going to defer to legal for that. Mr. So Derek. Thank you, Chris. I agree about the nuisance abatement uh, discussion you had. Also, she had two questions. I know the first one was about property tax. Uh, her property is still going to be an R1, so I, I don't see how there'd be any change, but it's not something that I would normally deal with, but just from what I'm looking at. Um, secondly, as far as the value of the home, I have no way of knowing. I, I will say just from you know discussion, I see there's a bunch of R2 lots there and across the street there's a, a lot of R3s and it seems like it's a positive thing that he's cleaning up the lot. So that, that seems like a positive. But as far as what would happen to the value for home, I, I have no way of knowing. Okay. Well, what's well, based yes. on, I mean, what someone's going to pay for it really. So it depends on the market, depends on interest rate. You know, there's so many variables on what insurance. the value for houses, insurance. Yeah, great point. I mean, so. I, I think Mr. Rogers, I, I think your your comment about, you know, you could certainly, ma'am, you could certainly contact the Terrebonne Parish tax assessor if you have a concern about your property taxes. As far as your property value goes, what I often hear is that that is really subject to interpretation or, or subjective until you actually have a situation where you have an appraisal pre this date and then another appraisal that comes up or comps, right? Comps here and comps after this date. And I mean, you know the world I'm talking about. So um, that, that I think is, is something that's a little bit harder to pinpoint. Okay. All right. Uh, administration. Oh, yeah. So our staff report. Uh, the proposal is to rezone from R1 to R3 for the purposes of placing a mobile home. The zoning ordinance states that in order to rezone property, one of the following conditions must apply. Error, change in conditions, increase in need for sites for business or industry, or number four, subdivision of land. Applicant and staff agree that the application fits under item two, change in conditions due to the increasing need for affordable housing in the area. The subject property is budding an existing R3 zone district, so the request is exempt from the minimum size requirement. The applicant has been approved for a mobile home through the state's Restore LA program to replace this home that was destroyed by Ida. There is a mobile home permit application that is pending zoning approval. All public notice requirements have been met and staff received two calls regarding the request expressing no opposition. Staff recommends approval. Okay. Commissioners, any comments? Mr. Thibodeau? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Nixon, you, 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 there's two lots here, and I noticed you said you're going to put a mobile home there on it, one of the addresses. It, no, it's going across both of them. I'm okay, put so it that on one these. mobile home will spread across both yeah. lots. Okay. Thank you. Any other uh, comments? If not, I would be looking for a motion. I'll offer a motion to approve as per... Staff recommendation. I have a motion by Mr. Thibodeau and a second by Ms. Angel. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. So motion passes. Congratulations. And, and just 
for everyone's awareness, this is a recommendation that's going to the council. So ultimately, it'll be at the council. I don't know if we have dates yet, but it'll be sometime in August. All right, so now we're moving on to um, F2. Hang on, wait a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Chain, what, train was in gear. Hmm. Is it at the front? Where is it? I know it's going to be, well, the 28th is the last date of August that you have a council meeting, but it can't be that far back. It could be. I really should reword my recommendations. September 25th. No. No, remember, it'll be introduced, okay, August 12th, and then. Hold it over 30 days. Yeah. Introduced August 12th. Yeah, okay, right. August okay, Hold it over 30 there you go. Days. September Labor 25th. Day. Okay. What's the date again? Just September twenty fifth. September would 25th. be the the public hearing at the council. They're they're going to introduce it mm -hmm. in August, but August twelfth. But the actual public hearing would be September twenty fifth. Okay. Thank you, Becky. September eleventh. All right. Thank you, administration. September eleventh. August twenty fifth. Thirty days. <sighs> All right. We are going to go to F two now. Uh, rezoning from R1, single-family residential, to R2, two-family residential, lot 1 through 27, block 1, lots 1 through 9, block 2, lots 1 through 39, block 3, lots 1 through 19, block 4, Parkway Place, subdivision, Jim Builders, LLC. Yes, sir. Name and address. David Wade, 7839 Park Avenue, Homa. Uh, Representing Chris Ernie on the rezoning of the remaining lots of Parkwood. Uh, half of the lots have been rezoned already from R1 to R2, and we're asking for the remaining uh, section out there to be rezoned from R1 to R2. Okay, and we're going to open it up to the public. Going once, public on this matter. Going two times, public on this matter. Three times, public. Move to close. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers and a second by Mr. Thibodeau. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Motion passes. Administration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a proposal to rezone lots 1 through 27 of Block 1, lots 1 through 9 of Block 2, and lots 1 through 39 of Block 3, and lots 1 through 19 of Block 4 of Parkwood Place Subdivision from R1 to R2. The zoning ordinance states that in order to rezone property, one of the following conditions must apply. Error, change in conditions, increase in need for sites for business or industry or subdivision of land. The applicant and staff agree the application fits under item two, change in conditions. Parkwood subdivision received final approval by the Planning Commission in 2018 and was originally conceived as a mixed density residential development consisting mainly of single family residential with higher density residential and future development areas. The site is adjacent to lots zone neighborhood commercial in order to provide locations for businesses to provide for the needs of the future residents. Since 2018, a combination of factors such as high interest rates and increased costs of insurance have slowed sales and construction and Hurricane Ida in 2021 destroyed much of the housing stock in Terrebonne, especially affordable housing. Uh, Terrebonne Parish, Consolidated Government, Housing, and Human Services have been working closely with the applicant, as well as several community housing development organizations to provide quality, affordable housing. In fall 2022, the Zoning Land Use Commission and the Council approved a rezone from R1 to R2 for 50 or so lots in the center of Parkwood subdivision, and the designers have prepared plans for great-looking duplexes, which serve to provide more affordable housing. This rezone would provide an opportunity for more of the same. Single family average daily trips are 10.06 and duplexes are 5.86, resulting in fewer average daily trips. It would not negatively impact the streets, nor would the increase impact drainage because the footprint for the duplex would be the same as the single family residential. 
All public notice requirements have been met. Staff received no calls. Staff recommends approval. Thank you, administration. Uh, first of all, any comments by the commissioners? Mr. Thibodeau. Yes, sir. You know, uh, I, 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 I see your explanation, change in conditions, but initially this track was proposed as a 144 single family dwelling, right? In, in initially, Parkwood. Is that well, right? what you see, yes, but the future development area that's, well, it's black, it looks black in the screen there, but it was just called out as future development. The plans that I've seen showed multifamily. Yeah, well, I, I understand what y'all doing or trying to do. I, I just, when you cite change in conditions, I wonder what, we're talking about change in conditions in the subdivision. And, you know, I mean, it was proposed to be R1. Well, which, which one would you, would you suggest? I don't know. I looked at them and I don't have an answer. I don't know. So you, I picked the best, the best I picked the best all one right, I could. All that's, right. I'm going to leave it alone. And if you did that, that's all I have, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thibodeau. Mr. McGuire. I'm sorry. Oh, you good? Okay. All right. I have a motion approval as per staff recommendation, Mr. Chairman. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Thibodeau and a second by Mr. Sudier. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Thank motion you. passes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. David. Yeah, and just, just again, for clarification purposes, the uh, approval tonight is, is a recommendation from the Zoning and Land Use Commission to the Parish Council. So at the Parish Council meeting on August 12th, 2024, they'll be calling for a public hearing, and the public hearing will actually be September 25th, 2024. Thank you, administration. I just want to acknowledge Mr. Councilman from District 1, Mr. Brian Pledger, just walked in. Thank you for being here, sir. And Mr. Chairman, you got Carl, Carl Harding. Yeah. Hey, bud. Sorry, I didn't see you back there. My, I got my glasses on. I could see close, not far. So Carl Harding from Council District 2. District 2. As well. All right, guys. Thank y'all both for coming. We appreciate it. We know y'all both got busy schedules. Okay, we are going to... G1, preliminary hearing uh, for rezoning from R1 single family residential to R2 two family residential 148 Square Wolf Lane. Karen Harris, the applicant, calls for a public hearing on said matter for Thursday, August 15, 2024, at 6 p.m. Looking for a motion. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Sudier, a second by Mr. Thibodeau. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. So motion passes. We're going to G1B, rezone from open land to C2, general commercial, 1923 St. Louis Canal Road. Walton Jefferson and Miss Jeanette uh, Daisy is the applicant uh, for a public hearing on said matter for Thursday, August 15th, 2024 at 6 p.m. Looking for a motion. So move, Mr. Chair. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers. Second. A second by Ms. Angel. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. So motion passes. Uh, H, staff report. Yes, sir. So uh, what we wanted to talk to you guys about tonight. Um, you all, or at least those, I know we have a, a number of, of newer members, but in recent years, we've had a couple of home occupation applications come before the Zoning and Land Use Commission from folks who are looking to open up a pet grooming service in their home. So home occupations. So, you know, I think some of the more typical uh, types are like a beauty salon, you know, somebody converting a room in their house to that. Uh, massage therapy, we've seen a number of those. Um, piano lessons, tutoring, things of a personal nature that are recurring, something that happens on a monthly or quarterly basis, right? With pet grooming services, oftentimes it also included like kennels or overnight boarding, but some of them were just strictly that, pet grooming. They wanted to clip dogs or something like that, right? Which is a recurring basis. Now, is it personal? Well, it isn't necessarily personal to a human being, but for some people and their fur babies, that, that is personal, right? Um, I mean, their kid, they're bringing their kids to get their hair cut or to piano lessons. Why not their dog to get a haircut? Um, 
at the time, uh, and one of the latest ones, and I think that was maybe in 2017, I think it's, we have it in the backup. We had actually gone so far, yeah, it was April 20th of 2017. We had requested an opinion from the legal department, and that's essentially what they fell on to, well, two things. One, where does pet grooming services fall in the zoning ordinances? In the definitions, it falls under uh, Animal Services Limited, which is a commercial activity, right? So that that's like vets and all. I mean, there's a whole bunch more in that definition than just pet grooming services. So between that and that it was at the opinion at the time was personal services for human personal services, um, the opinion basically said, it is not eligible for a home occupation. But as time goes on and we're seeing more of those requests come along, we're starting to think, well, maybe if we just limit it further and just specific to the pet grooming services, you know, so we're not talking about kennels. We're not talking about boarding. We're not talking about veterinary services. We're strictly talking about pet grooming services. Um, and so what we're proposing is a consideration to amend the definition of home occupation to get a bit more specific instead of just saying animal services limited, but just to pull the, some of the specific terminology out of the animal services limited definition to be specific to dog bathing and clipping salons and pet grooming shops but excluding outdoor kennels and overnight boarding gotcha. as an acceptable or eligible type of home occupation. It's still, they still have to come before you guys for the home occupation approval, but it just opens it up a little bit more to allow for that particular type of service. So that's what this is about. I'm just discussion and possible action. I mean, Obviously, you're just seeing this, you know, the, the protocol, the procedure here is for us to introduce this, um, discuss it, and then, you know, we want to call for a public hearing. Well, we would like for you guys to call for the public hearing on Thursday, August 15th at our next regular meeting. And at that time, it, the, the request or possible action would be to approve the resolution and basically forward the matter on to the parish council for consideration, just like you did for the rezonings earlier. Okay. So right now it's just more of an open discussion. Yeah. Any commissioners have a comment or does someone want to make a motion to uh, have a public hearing on August 15th? Miss, 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 Go ahead. I, I can talk after him. I'll second. Okay. I have a motion by Mr. Sudier, a second by Mr. Thibodeau. And Mr. Thibodeau, you have the floor. Yeah, the, the reason we're doing this is to be more concise with, with I guess, with the home, op, ap, home, home occupation application. Is, is that well, the we're reason do? we're doing it is because we continue to have these types of requests. Right. So right. it seems to be the type of thing that is becoming more and more commonplace. And, and you know, these zoning ordinances were from 1976. Right. You know, we didn't have... Fur, I don't know if fur baby was a term in 1976. At any rate, we keep getting asked these questions, and, and rather than just telling these, giving these people a flat no, we say, well, wait a minute, you know, maybe there's some something in there, and let's think about it a little bit more. So when we when we did, and, and in looking at the 2017 um, legal opinion, when we saw what they were citing specifically out of the ordinances we said well wait maybe we could make a few adjustments there and, and open it up mm -hmm. do, do, as far as you know have we had any of the approved requests expand to boarding and uh something else okay well so far they've never been approved okay we've had no home occupation for dog oh grooming? not for pet grooming no Yeah. That's oh, that's okay. Right. Okay. But yeah, that's right. There was one. I don't know the name of the subdivision, but it's next to Barrios. Yeah, in Lamar. I think Lamar. Yeah. Lamar subdivision. Yeah, but yeah. it didn't generate a complaint of, of some expansion. Phone's not ringing. Boarding. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, so once again, I have a motion by Thanks, Mr. Soudier, a second by Mr. Thibodeau. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Motion passes. Commissioner comments, and uh, I know Mr. Carl's here. Um, if there is something y'all would like to, so we're wrapping up the um, zoning and land use commission. We're moving on to the planning. You're okay? Okay. Mr. Bryan, if you wanted to mention something right now too, you good? Okay. All right. Uh, commissioner comments, chairman comments, public comments. I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers, a second by Mr. Thibodeau. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. So motion passes. All right, we're going to jump right into it. Convening as a regional planning commission. Once again, I will have the uh, prayer by Mr. Thibodeau, and this time the pledge will be done by Mr. McGuire. God, we thank you this day for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And Lord, as we deliberate this evening, we ask and pray that we provide value to our citizens of Terrebonne. And Lord, we ask that you bless the parish, uh, bless our state, and please bless our nation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Ms. Becky, <laughs> roll call. Mr. Billiot? Here. Mr. Gold? Here. Mr. Liner? Here. Mr. McGuire? Here. Mrs. Poinsaw? Here. Mr. Rogers? Here. Mr. Smith? Mr. Soudier? Here. Mr. Thibodeau, we have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Becky. Uh, see conflict disclosure. A reminder to the commissioners that at any time tonight, a conflict of interest exists, arises, or is recognized as to any issue during this meeting, he or she should immediately disclose it and to recuse himself or herself participating in debate, discussion, and voting on this matter. Does any member have anything to disclose at this time? Okay. Um, D, approval of the minutes of the Homa Terrebonne Regional Planning Commission minutes for the regular meeting of June 20, 2024. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers. A uh, second, Ms. Ms. Angel. All approved, aye. aye. All opposed, nay. So motion passes. E, Mr. Soudier. For the July 18, 2024 invoices and the treasury report for June 2024. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Soudier and a second by Mr. Rogers. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. Motion passes. Communications. Uh, well, sir, we don't have any uh, communications, but I would like to uh, communicate welcome to our newest planning commissioner. Oh, okay. Mr. Mr. Mike Billiot. How you doing? Welcome, Mr. Michael. Thank you very much. Attorney, planner, PhD in planning. So. Yeah, thank you for joining us. I'm sure your expertise will be uh, used. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. All right. Um, GO Business. Um, need a motion to take one um, and two um, off the table. So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers and a second by Mr. McGuire. All approved, aye. aye. All opposed, nay. Motion passes. All right. G1, survey and division of property belonging to the estate of D.C. McIntyre, LLC, into lot one and two. Yes, sir. Name and address. David Waite, 7839 Park Avenue, Homa. Uh, representing the developer for this particular track. It's been on the agenda for quite a while. We were dealing with in the past about maybe trying to get a variance for a drainage report and all that other stuff. So we finally got the drainage report done and approved by uh, by engineering and all the other things are done. It's the main minor subdivision and we're asking for approval tonight. Okay, and I see there's no public hearing here. So we'll just go straight to administration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a minor subdivision process D to create two lots for single family residential use. The applicant withdrew their request for a variance and submitted a drainage study. The proposed lot two is already developed, so drainage calcs are only for lot one. 
The proposed lot configuration and layout meets parish subdivision regulation standards. All utility letters have been submitted. Terrebonne Parish Engineering has issued an approval letter. Staff recommends approval. Thank you, administration. Any commissioner comments? If not, looking for a motion. I'll move to approve as per staff recommendation. I have a mo motion by Mr. Rogers, a second by Ms. Angel. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. So motion passes. Thank you. G2, lot A through I, a redivision of property belonging to Mr. Paul Bortel Carter. Someone would like to come up. I'm not sure where Mr. Rembert is. I, I talked to him at 415 and I thought he was coming to the meeting, but he hasn't shown up. Okay, so um, we'll open it up to the public on this matter. Going once public, two times public on this matter, three times public. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers. A second by Mr. Sudier. All approved, aye. aye. All opposed, nay. Motion passes. Administration. Um, well, Mr. Chairman, our recommendation is going to be to table this item. Okay. Um, we have not uh, received any information regarding the whether or not the hydrant's been placed, so we should go ahead and table it. We will recommend that it be tabled. Okay. Looking for a motion on that, commissioners. A motion. A motion by Mr. Sudier, a second by Mr. Rogers. All approved, aye. Hang on a minute. That's, that's obviously 30 days until the next regular meeting, I guess, huh? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, table it to the next regular meeting. Yeah, My you. bad. Sorry. Okay, once again, I have a motion by Mr. Sudier, a second by Mr. Rogers. All approved, aye. All, right. All opposed, nay. So the motion passes. H1, lot 5A and 5B, a redivision of a revised lot 5, block 9, addendum number 3 to Mulberry subdivision. Someone here for H1? This is the same. It's, oh. it's Ken Rembert's project. Oh, gotcha. Oh, yeah, I see it now. Okay. Um, no one here. No one else is here. You want me to do a public hearing or just table it as well? That's the board. Well, I mean, if this were some routine conditions of approval, I would, I would, I might think otherwise, but there is something on there that I think needs to actually have the applicant Hit to present. agree to on record. Um, so I, I think the best thing to do in this instance is to table it for just to, for the, to the next regular meeting. Okay. Uh, I'll offer a motion to table the matter until the next regular planning commission meeting as per staff. A motion by Mr. Thibodeau, a second by Ms. Angel. All approved, aye. aye. All opposed, nay. So motion passes. H2, Division of Parcel E, Phase 1B, Lot 1 through 5 on Alma Heights Subdivision, belonging to Shab Baby. Elisa Champagne, Charles McDonald Land Surveyors, 3697 West Main Street. Uh, what we have here is a... Uh, Minor subdivision of a tract of land, dividing it into five tracks. Um, we are asking for a variance from the fire hydrant uh, location for track one. Uh, it does fall within a 10%, that allowable 10%. Uh, in addition, um, all the utility letters haven't been turned into the department yet, but we do have them all back. Um, and... Um, um, what was I going to say? Lost my train of thought there. Um, that's it. Well, it's really just a five lots. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if you just want to step to the side for yeah. a second, I'll open it to the public on this matter. Go on once. Public. Two times. Public. Three times. Public. Move to close. Motion by Mr. Rogers. Second. Second by Mr. Thibodeau. All approved. Aye. Aye. All opposed. Nay. Motion passes. Administration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is a minor subdivision process D to create five lots for single family residential use with a variance request from the 250 foot fire hydrant distance for lot one. The proposed lot configuration and layout meet parish subdivision regulation standards except for the fire hydrant distance. The overage is within the 10% allowable distance as per the Planning Commission policy. Municipal addresses need to be depicted on the plat. Not all utility letters have been submitted. 
applicant has indicated that the development will utilize either individual treatment plants or community sewer. Terrebonne Parish Pollution Control has confirmed that community sewer is not available in the area, but the Department of Health has issued an approval letter. All public notice requirements have been met. Staff received two calls for more information. Staff recommends approval of the fire hydrant distance from 250 feet to 262.6 feet for lot one. Staff recommends approval of the subdivision on the following conditions. Municipal addresses be depicted on the plat, submittal of all utility letters, and that the applicant acknowledge that the sewer type shall be individual treatment plans. Okay, thank you, administration. Any commissioner comments? If not, looking for a motion. Mr. Thibodeau. Yes, sir. Mr. Uh, Director, this thing is probably a stone's throw away from the north plant, but there is no... There are no lines in the area. It, well, I, I'm be shooting at the at the dark in this, but I, I have a feeling that's probably why they put or on their application. But I did confirm with pollution control. They went out and looked at it. They said it is close, but it's just a little bit too far away to require that they tie into the community sewer. But, you know, com, look, since you mentioned it, um, since um, community sewer systems is – you know, a master plan and, and implementation of expansion is one of the uh, projects that has been proposed as part of the community development block grant disaster recovery allocations that we received from Hurricane Ida. Uh, you know, this area, we're going to be looking at a master plan. We're going to look to areas to prioritize. So it's it's possible that sewer uh, community sewer may become available. And I actually typed that all into the staff report, and then I started deleting it out. <laughs> I figured you would ask it, though. Uh, but uh, certainly, I mean, they're not locked into yeah. individual treatment plants forever. If community sewer becomes available, they can tie into it. And, and since you brought up the CDBGDR, I noticed that that is just a study. It's just to script out a process or a plan. So nobody's going to get any sewer from this, right? Well, Based on what I read. The right that in the first alloc or sorry, the first description, project description, project summary that was submitted to the state, which is what you were reading, mm -hmm. um, that there wasn't enough money to at least to identify if they could implement it. Now, at we're in the process of submitting a more detailed um, description of the project. So if the costing comes back, that the actual master plan cost may be less than what was initially anticipated, which would then open up the door for some uh, implementation, certainly that would become part of the language in that proposal. If there's any additional funding, DR funding, that comes along later, you know, sometimes money is, goes unspent by other states, other jurisdictions, what have you. If more funding... Or if another project in the DR list of projects turns out that there's we, we were alloc or budgeting more money than necessary, we could re-budget that money or reallocate that to this project. This is one of our you know mm -hmm. priority type projects. It's just you know that type of infrastructure is very costly. So I understand, Mr. Chairman. You can shut me off if I go a little far, but since we're on this. Uh, did we get approval yet on on the plan? We have approval for all of the projects that were submitted oh. in all of them, the ones in January and the ones in March. Yeah. Now, rather than uh, at first they said, okay, well, you're going to have until June 19th to submit the refined plans for the ones that were approved back in January. Mm -hmm. Right before June 19th came along, they said, you know what? No, you submit them all by November 30th, but it's a rolling deadline. So that what I mean by that is as soon as we get one, we're not sitting on it till November 30th. Once we get one finished, we're submitting it. So Yeah, well, all right. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. All right. I don't remember. Uh, Commissioner, okay, My we're looking for a motion. Additional approval. We're looking for a, a motion for um, H2, correct? Yes. I'll go ahead and move staff recommendations for the variance as well as uh, the other conditions stated. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers. Second. A second by Ms. Angel. All approved aye. Aye. All opposed nay. 
some motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, H3. Uh, a division of property belonging to Alamo Crawfish Farms. Tra tracks A and B. Elisa Champagne, uh, Charles McDonald Land Surveyors, 3697 West Main Street. Uh, we have a, this is a minor subdivision located on Butcher Road where they have a fairly large track in the rear they have some crawfish ponds that they fish crawfish in, and they would like to carve out this little track A in the front to be able to build a home, I think. And um, we're we were in, within the required for our fire hydrant location, and uh, we ask for approval. Thank you so much. And if you just want to step to the side just for a second, we'll open some public hearing on this matter. Go on once, public hearing on this matter. Two times, public hearing on this matter. Three times, public hearing. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers, a second by Mr. Thibodeau. All approved, aye. Aye. All opposed, nay. So motion passes. Administration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is minor subdivision process D to create two lots, one for single family residential and one raw land. Although submitted as a process D, this is more akin to a process A raw land division. The proposed track A is already developed. All that's really being done here is to carve out a raw land track. It's track B. Lot configuration and layout meet pair subdivision regulation standards for development. Municipal addresses need to be depicted on the plat. Drainage calcs aren't required. Uh, there have been proposed subdivisions in the past that were ultimately withdrawn by the applicant because the planning commission was requiring them to hard surface Butcher Road. Now, those were major subdivisions. Uh, since this is a minor subdivision, raw land division, the improvements are not a requirement. Not all utility letters have been provided, but a process A raw land division doesn't require utility letters anyway. Staff received one call inquiring about the past applications and that would this one be required to hard surface Butcher Road. Staff recommends approval on the condition that municipal addresses for raw land track B be depicted on the plat. Thank you, administration. Commissioner, comments? Yeah, just, just, Mr. Thibodeau? Know, just a question, you know, the commission can require improvement, and, and I, I noticed because it is a raw land submission, then the butcher road doesn't have to be impacted, it doesn't have to be intended to. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. We get, we get, we're getting a lot of these, and perhaps some of the, not a lot of these specific <laughs> ones, but perhaps some of these minor subdivisions, uh, you know, I guess they're complying with everything in A, process A and D. And well, they're not compliant with A because they they have they need to have a municipal address for right. the track B. But I hear you, yeah, everything right. else. Anyway, I just wish we continue to pay attention to maybe some folks are trying to get around some of their duties and responsibilities under the planning. So thank you, sir. Okay. Any other uh, comments by the commissioners? Okay, I guess we're looking for a motion. I'll go ahead and move for approval on the condition that the municipal addresses for raw land be depicted on the flat as for staff. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers. I think a second by Mr. Billiot. All approved, aye. aye. All opposed, nay. So motion passes. Staff Thank report. You. Yes, ma'am. Uh, nothing to report. Administrative approvals. I move. Administrative approvals, one through five. I have a motion by Mr. Rogers, a second by Mr. Sudier. All approved, aye. aye. All opposed, nay. Motion passes. Okay, um, committee report. We didn't meet. Okay, commissioner comments. Once again, I want to open it up to Mr. Carl, Mr. Bryan. Y'all okay? All right, any other commissioner comments? Mr. Thibodeau. Yeah, uh, Mr. Director, did we give any more thought to the signage required and the lettering on the sign from two inches to a, to a larger size. Actually, what I think we're going to start doing is printing out the signs for the applicants and then giving them the signs to go post. That way we can ensure that all the size requirements are met. You it's know, a great idea. We don't have to fool with any of that. We've got a, a, a large-scale, you know, printer that can handle that, that size, and I'll 
be especially happy to print those out whenever we move back into the tower, hopefully at the end of the summer. <laughs> Will there be a fee yeah, for that? Will there be a cost associated with that? Or well, it's you know we have it. We have application fees, so I mean the the, kind the of costs for the okay. for that are covered. So thank you, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Anyone else? No chairman comments. Any public comments? I need a motion to adjourn, so please. A motion by Mr. Rogers. A second by Mr. Sudier. All approved. Aye. Aye. All opposed. Nay. So motion passes. Yeah. I'm